So travel restrictions are slowly being lifted and as long as the new variants don't throw a spanner in the works, things are returning to normal. And that means that some of you may even now be planning your trip to Germany. Now, personally, I still recommend caution. There is still lots of time for something unexpected to force Germany back into lockdown. But perhaps now is a good time for a few tips. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about taking photos and videos without breaking any laws or annoying lots of people. Because with modern technology and social media, we are now taking more photographs every two minutes than were taken in the whole of the 20th century. First, a piece of advice. Now, I sometimes make travelogues, but filming them is not fun. I experience most places through the lens of a camera. I earn some money doing that, which makes it a job. If you're traveling for pleasure, you might want to put your camera or your phone away most of the time actually experience the place and take only enough photos and videos to remind you of a great trip. Trust me, you'll get more out of it that way. Privacy is a serious issue in Germany. A lot of people think that it is straight up illegal if you so much as point a camera in their direction, but that's not actually quite true. So here is the rule of thumb. If you deliberately focus on specific people, you must get their permission before you publish the photo anywhere, including online. However, if you're photographing something else and somebody just happens to walk into shot, then that's fine. As long as they're not the main focus of your picture, you're in the clear. Some people also seem to think that it is pretty much illegal to take photographs of houses and cars, but again, this isn't actually quite true. As long as you're standing in a public space, anything that you can see is fine to photograph. What you can't do is, for example, lift the camera up over a wall so that you can photograph private property that you wouldn't otherwise be able to see. If you're on private property, you need the owner's permission to film or take photos there. And it doesn't even need to be fenced off or have signs saying private property. If it is clearly separated from the public street, even if it's just a railing at ankle height, consider it private. The same applies to train stations, metro stations, shopping malls and so on. These are publicly accessible, but they are not public property and they often have house rules restricting the use of cameras. Cameras aren't necessarily banned outright and in many of these places they don't mind, for example, tourists just taking selfies. But if, like me, you have a great big camera or you're making money with your photos and videos, you may need to ask permission. Also take note of restrictions in museums, castles and other tourist attractions. You may need to buy a permit to be allowed to photograph or you may not be allowed to use a flash. The more popular a place is, the more restrictions there will be. Don't fly drones unless you really know the laws which are very restrictive. It is actually quite difficult to find places in tourist destinations where it is legal to fly a drone without getting somebody's permission. For example, most of central Berlin is a strict no-fly zone. On the more positive side, in Germany you have freedom of panorama. What this means is that as long as you're standing in a public space, you don't need to worry about copyright. There may be some things in your photo that are technically protected by copyright legislation, things like works of art, billboards, even some buildings. But because they're in public or visible from a public place, you're not infringing on the copyright. Well, that's most of the legal stuff. Now for some general advice. I strongly recommend not going for all the Instagram favorites like this or this or this or also this, or even this. We have all seen these pictures a million times before. Also, some of these places suffer from over-tourism, with sometimes hundreds of people every day flocking there just to take photos simply for the likes. Often they're walking on private property or even worse, nature reserves, and are often very unpopular with the locals. So you'll be seen as part of the problem, you'll have to fight your way through crowds to get your shot, and if it turns out good, which it probably won't, 
it'll be a cliché. I actually suggest that you put together an itinerary that genuinely interests you, not one that simply ticks off all the same bucket list items that everybody else has. And if you do decide to visit one of the classic tourist attractions, and why not, then try looking for a different angle. For example, this is clichéd Rotenburg ob der Tauber. But this is also Rotenburg ob der Tauber, and so is this. Basically, try to show us something that we haven't seen before. Please. Finally, when it comes to uploading to social media, don't just upload everything. When I was young, one of the worst forms of torture was the slideshow. A relative or a friend would force you to sit in a darkened room for two hours while they showed off the 150 photos they took in Berlin. This is me in front of the Brandenburg Gate. This is Martha in front of the Brandenburg Gate. This is me and Martha in front of the Brandenburg Gate after we asked a friendly local to take our picture. Please don't replicate that experience for your Facebook friends. Just show us a small selection of your best photos. This is my foot. I accidentally pressed the shutter, but you can see the interesting pattern in the paving stones. This is a litre of beer, which I enjoyed very much, although it cost me an arm and a leg. OK, well, that might seem like a lot, but let me try to boil it down to one very simple principle. Your enjoyment is the most important thing. Actually, experience being there in the moment. Look around. Relax. Taking pictures is way down your list of priorities.